what's up guys it's your girl matt cox with ma couture crafting and today we're going to be talking about washing printable labels so that's the way that i do my labels i print them on fabric so i'm able to type up what i want on the computer print it out on fabric and then sew it to my quilt and the company that i use has a ton of different types of fabric they have silk they have um, poplin they have twill just a ton of different types of fabrics. Now they come in these eight and a half by 11 sheets or you can get them in rolls. Um, I usually do multiple quilts at a time so I'm not wasting this because it is a little on the expensive side. For a 15 sheet pack, I paid $44 and I think I got this from um, like Road to California when they were here. You can get them online, you can get them at Amazon but they are a little more expensive. So something else you can do is most people's printers will take smaller sizes like a four by six card so you can totally cut them down and run them through like that so that you're not wasting any of it because i try very hard to at least do two sometimes even four um uh labels at a time that way you're getting the most bang for your buck so here it says that anything can be printed on paper can be printed on this it's specially coated fabric the magic is in the threads. It talks about you don't have to heat set it. It's good for washing, so on and so forth. And then it has the instructions. Um, you don't need any kind of special software. You don't need any kind of special ink. The ink does not have to be heat set. Um, will you be able to wash it? It says, yes, for best results, hand wash the printed fabric using a color safe mild detergent such as wool light, dark. The fabrics can also be machine washed on a delicate cycle with cold water, dry flat or hang to dry. So I tested it because I know that there's a process out there that I started with where, well, actually I didn't do the bubble jet, but I ironed white fabric to freezer paper. I cut it down to eight and a half by 11. I sent it through the printer and that's definitely a cheaper option. However, it was just a pain in the butt. So I stopped doing that and I started using this product here and I haven't gone back since. And people are like, well, can you wash it? I'm like, sure, you can wash it. It says you can wash it. And I finally got to see one of my quilts that's been washed numerous times and it still it holds up. I mean, I have a much better technique of the way that I attach it now, but it's it'll hold up. One of the things that I found from this process is that you really do want to use um, cold. You want to use cold water on a gentle cycle. It makes a difference. I tested it in scalding hot water. I washed each one, I think, three times. And I also wanted to see how good the rhinestones would hold up on it also. So I have a quilt that's covered in rhinestones and I heat set those rhinestones, but I wanted to know if a better option would have been to use E6000. So I put E6000 on one side of my labels and I put the heat set on the other and I washed them. I washed them in cold water, I washed them in hot water, and then one I washed in every single cycle to see what was gonna happen. And what happened is if you wash it in cold water and you let it air dry, you get the best results. Also, the best, the absolute best and most crisp results are when you use black, um, use just black ink. I've used all the color ink because I wanted to know if it would really hold up. And I had some slight bleeding, but not enough for me to be concerned or not want to use this anymore. I think this is a really, really good option. I'm pleased with the results. Again, cold water. And I didn't lose any rhinestones. I didn't lose any from the E6000 side and I didn't lose any from the heat set side. I heat set each of the stones with my heat setting tool for 20 seconds and I didn't lose any. And I washed this in scalding hot water, the hottest that I can get it. And I washed it three times um, back to back to back. I didn't put it in the dryer because I really don't feel like quilts should be in the dryer. Maybe you want to fluff them, but they really need to be washed in cold water and then hung out to dry. You might want to spin them, you know, to get the excess water out, but they really don't need to be on a full dryer thing, in my opinion. So that's the same way that I treated the experiment. And it works. I'm really pleased with the results of the one that I washed in cold water. I did the QR code and the Spotify code because I was curious to see if it would still work after being washed. And it will. If you're going to do the QR codes, do one in black in a really bold color. Do not do one in light gray like I did because I didn't have the best results. It still scans and I can still get it to scan after being washed, but it's not as crisp as the black ones that I've done in the past. And also, if you're doing the QR codes, be sure to, to get them as big as you can. You really don't want to go smaller than two and a half by two and a half or two by two. Don't go smaller than that. You're just asking your cameras to work a little too hard. I'm not saying they don't scan, but I had to kind of work, work for it. 
So again, I'm really pleased with this product. You can wash it in scalding hot water if it's all black. My black did not, it didn't budge. It's just, it's clear. Um, the colors faded in the scalding hot water. And also, in order to mark it, I used a Micron pen. You guys have seen these all at Michael's and Joann's. They're kind of expensive. You use a coupon on them. But they are pigment pens and they're archival ink, so they're not supposed to bleed, run, or anything like that. And they didn't. I clearly wrote hot and cold on my <laughs> samples and it still says hot and cold, like, just like I wrote it, which is good to know. So if you want to do some artwork or drawing and if you ever wanted to know if these pens really do work and stand up against hot and cold and at least three washes, they will. All right, guys, if you found any value from this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. So after I printed out my labels, I'm cutting them apart. Try to be able to give yourself at least a quarter of an inch of non-usable fabric around so that you can catch it in the, um, in the seams. So now I'm going to back it with a scrap piece of fabric. I usually prefer to use white, but right now I'm using blue because this is just a test. And I'm okay with that. But usually I prefer to use white for this and not a patterned white, just white. So I'm cutting a square that is the same size as the label. And look, my mother came to visit me and I can see her legs. Oh, well. But again, try to keep a quarter of an inch of non-usable fabric or if the design runs off, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you know, this is the label and you want it to be nice. However, if it runs off into the sides, it's just going to make it probably look more finished. So now I'm putting them right sides together. And I'm going to sew all the way around them. I did not leave a place to turn it. I sewed all the way around. Now I'm clipping a diagonal angle right here. I don't clip through the threads just to reduce some bulk because I am about to turn it. I pull the two pieces of fabric away from one another and cut a slit in the back. It really doesn't matter how big this slit is because really the reason why I'm sewing these edges around is so that I don't have raw edge applique. I want a finished edge for my quilt label. So you can cut a pretty good size hole. I mean, you don't have to make it tight. So I don't know why I made this so tight, but I think it's just because I like to turn stuff. I don't know why I like to turn things, but I do. Stick something in there and poke your corners out the best you can. I'm using a purple thing knockoff kind of thing, I think, because it does not say purple thing on it and it's blue, but it's similar. Grab a turner or a bone folder or what do we call those things? Why am I calling it a bone folder? I'm, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but you get the point. Poke it out. Uh, bone. Why can't I think of the name? Anyway, so now I'm just adding rhinestones to go on ahead and, and see if they will stay through a wash. And I use my hot tool there, 20 seconds to fix it on there. And then I use some E6000 and let it dry overnight. So this is the first wash for everything. So the cold stayed the same. The one, that one at the bottom got washed twice. And the hot one up there in the right hand corner got washed one time in scalding hot water. This is six times for this one. Looks good, look at that black. That's what I'm talking about. This one here is three times on cold. Everything's still scanned, including the QR code. And this one here is all of them together. And the one in the bottom right hasn't been touched at all. So you can see the one that got washed six times. It still looks good. You can still do the Spotify code for sure. Um, you would need to do the QR code in black. That's just the best advice I can give you. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.